Welcome back to my channel, Coach LeBlanc in China. I've tried to do a few other things here, a little bit different. Try to ensure we create a bit more of a family environment, a closer atmosphere. We're not a massive company, we're not a massive team. So we've done some uh, regular, before COVID, we did some regular together function activities like every few months go climb mountains together we've been to the movie theater a few times we've gone and played football we've had badminton competitions most of these we're taking a little bit of time out of the day sometimes a half a day working time to take them out go have a bit of fun it all adds to the journey together in the company. It builds the relationships between each individual and different departments in the company, and it gives them something different. Something different to post on their social media, something different to talk to their families about. And let's face it, a lot of these people, they're working long hours. They're often their partners working long hours. Come the weekends, if they've got children, they're taking the children to extra learning classes. Children, a lot of the time here, are going to school on Saturdays for extra study time. Parents don't get much time to do anything. There's only a few times a year they can get total relaxation time to go and do some fun things with their kids or their family on weekends. So again, these little outings and things you can do with the team and the company are a good thing. And they've done, they've worked well for us. Early last year, I did something really different. I found a lot of the staff really de desired to send their children to English classes after school. But a lot of them can't afford it because the prices are crazy. So I offered them something special and I ran myself for uh, six months, English classes for their children. The children, a group of them, we've got a, uh, quite a few kids in the, in the company, in their families, aging from seven through to 11, 12. And it was a lot of fun. I did a Saturday morning four hour English class for the kids, basically. And uh, we ferried, used the company shuttle bus to ferry some of them in. Most of the others found their own way there, brought the kids in. And it developed some other interesting dynamics that I didn't really expect. We found the uh, parents. When they normally, during the working week, have no time to really mingle or do too much or talk together or share ideas about what's going on with their families or talk about anything except work. They, um, while I'm looking after the kids in this classroom teaching them, and I'm showing show you some photos here, they, uh, the parents, they have an awesome time. The parents actually were getting together playing cards around the card table, around the uh, lunchroom tables, and a couple of factory tables. And had a lot of fun together. After the first couple of weeks, some of the parents started bringing, um, you know, watermelon to cut up to share with everybody. And some others were bringing some drinks. So it ended up, uh, I'm offering this free education. It wasn't really detailed education, but it was, it was a fun for the children to actually listen to a foreigner, have close discussions and relaxed conversations and try to learn basic things from a foreigner and break down some of their nervousness of talking to a foreigner and being around a foreigner. So it turned out really good. Since COVID-19 hit, it's been difficult to do any of this. I think next this next coming year, we'll probably do something similar again. 
I've also arranged some in-house classes of basic English for uh, some of the factory workers and some of the um, sort of middle level people in our company, which is a lot of fun for them. Get them together in a room, a couple of hours. I think we did a two hour class every week for about 15, 16 weeks. And they had a lot of fun. With everyone working and traveling, having a long travel trip home, uh, people here don't really have a chance to go out and go to a gym or do anything particular, uh, apart from maybe go for an evening walk somewhere. But the day's very long for them, so um, well, I did something even more interesting and crazy, would, some would say. And I, I have a very strong background in, in gym, training, first aid and the likes. And I ran a, uh, a first aid training course where I trained everybody in basic first aid. Very hard to find first aid training in China. Very rare that they do it in a company, but I've trained all of my staff. So basically they can even at home look after their families and they can look after each other in the company if we have a problem. I'm teaching them how to use gym equipment. So we set up a uh, gym equipment in the factory. Got them to help have fun painting it and decorating it and laying out the, the gym. Everyone got to sign their names on the walls. And then I've run a series of training programs for them. There's some group training and then individual training, teaching them various different types of skills from uh, boxing to using a TRX to doing calisthenic. I now encourage them all to get out of their desk at least 10 minutes a day during work time, get out of the, behind their desks and all their workstations in the factory, give themselves 10 minutes a day and go and do some exercise in the gym. Now, all of these things that we're doing in our company here have added a lot of extra excitement to the team. They build their, their connections together a lot stronger. Some work out together, play cards together at lunchtime. And all of this has helped us retain staff. Now, I'm not saying every company needs to do all of these things. But I like to be a little bit different and be creative and give them something different. I try to build a very tight team. And all of these things we've put together here now work really well together. Teams, people we've got are all very talented, with some very educated, very talented engineering staff. We're doing engineering design work in China, manufacturing, sourcing, distribution to all our other factories around the world, and finding some really good cost savings for our business globally. And without this team here now that we have, none of this would be possible. This is not about me, this is about the right people working together in the right way. So far, in the 10 years we've been running this business, this, this factory operation here, we have not had anybody want to leave on their own after a Chinese New Year break. Everyone comes back. So I think it, we're doing something right. I think it's working. So don't believe all these stories about the uh, migration every year that you're going to lose half of your employees because of Chinese New Year, that people just disappear. I think a lot of this is to do with these companies. They get a little bit bigger, they're working very hard, and so people get lost, they fall through the cracks. They're not listened to, they get a bit bored. And the Chinese methods of managing a company here are a little bit different. It's pretty hard, pretty tough. The expectations are pretty high. 
hope I've given you a little bit of an idea of what to expect when you're employing people in China. Some things you might need to do as a basic requirement and some interesting ideas on what you can do to really uh, add a bit of spice to the business and to the team. All right, off to work. Stay safe. Have a good Chinese New Year. I'll catch you in the next one.